What's going on here, guys? Uh, Mal here with MTech. Figured I'd show you the uh, the other power efficiency breakthrough I had. So here we have a uh, grounded receiver coil. It just sits on the little plate of metal, so it's uh, so it's even with the transmitter. It's nothing under the desk. And I found out that it'll give more current. Your receiver will give more current if you connect the ball antenna with a thin wire, like the same wire you wound your L2 with, which was 20 gauge in my case. So you're trying to go for the highest Q possible. And we got the scope hooked up. The frequency changed for some reason. It was at 1.9 megahertz. For some reason today, the transmitter is at 3.6. I, I don't know why the frequency changes by day. Uh, we're consuming 1.3 watts. I can get it down to less than one watt. Uh, we'll keep it right under one watt. And here's the crazy thing. So here's my short circuit current from my receiver. And all I did was just ground the receiver into the middle of my DC power supply. You can ground this anywhere, to a pipe in the ground, to your heater. And as you see, the current jumps up when I ground it. And that's not the interesting thing. And this meter is like spazzing out. So we got 12 volts there, or 11.9. And the efficiency comes from your high Q components, your negative resistance, and the fact you're in like a type of super resonance. Um, the probe's slightly affecting the circuit, so I'm going to disconnect it. Disconnect the oscilloscope. It'll be a little bit better now. I'm actually going to move it so it's down here. And here's the interesting thing. I'm shorting out the receiver. And doing that doesn't really affect my power. I can disconnect this. So, as you see, that light is still bright too over there. It's like this thing is sucking energy from two separate ground points when it's on. So I'll connect it back up. Anyway, this is the part that will blow your mind. So, I will disconnect the meter, get it out of the way. And everything fights me when I film one-handed. Sorry if it's a crappy video. Um, so as you see, receiver coil is just grounded. And we don't have to ground it. It just boosts the power. So I will take my little motor here. Literally just a little motor. I believe he uses one watt. I have the paper for him somewhere. And I'll hook up the receiver coil. Hopefully he will stay and not go flying off the table. So I'm able to run this little motor completely wirelessly under one watt of power. And I also have radiant energy effects like how how is this possible? That's going. That that by itself should be drawing all the power from the DC supply. And that is lit. Very bright. That's like full intensity. And that just connects to my grounded outlet and my metal desk. I'll go over there and show you there's no funny business going on. A lot of people doubt what I'm saying, but... I've been working on this thing for almost three years. And check this out. It actually gets brighter because I'm grounding it better. So when the wireless loads get brighter, the current to the transmitter drops, which is really interesting. That's my cat. Say hi. How you doing? So anyway, you can see how this is connected. There's my little RF diodes. And this won't light without the RF diodes. You need those to manifest the power you know and I'll touch both points like I don't put my foot here and touch the other point and like I ain't I don't get zapped because it's high frequency like you can see that I'm touching both points and the light should be going out huh I can't impede it but you get the idea 
it's just connected to my uh, metal desk. So that's going. Motor is going. The point I'm making is you can power up, in theory, an unlimited amount of wireless loads that are separately earth grounded. And there is no, no limit. Transmitter should have an unlimited working capacity, in theory. Nothing on that one. Some metals are really hot for this type of energy. Like, look at that. It really loves aluminum. No, anyway, this is the crazy part. <clears throat> I'll shut the DC power supply off, consuming less than one watt. We're off. It takes a few seconds to shut off because the circuit is so efficient. Uh, light is out. Uh, in this case, it's very, very dim. But that's just because I have the most sensitive RF receiver diodes you can buy and they're picking up like an ambient radio station and converting it to like very dim light or something so as you see the motors out too um now i will connect come on it's so hard to do one-handed now i'll connect my uh battery my nine volt battery and this will blow your mind like how is this possible i think i just broke my clip yeah, I just broke my clip, it bent it, but whatever. It's got some mileage. So, I'll hook up this 9-volt battery. Um, negative. And I know a lot of you probably hate the video quality already, but I'm sorry guys, I'm sick. Filming this one-handed, and I just want to get these effects out there, so. Come on, connect. And now I have to connect the, um, this to the negative. And there we go. Oh, come on, man. Everything fights you. There we go. Running off a 9 volt. Look at that. <clears throat> Still got radiant energy effects. And now if I were to ground this battery too into the air, which I'm not going to do because my this video quality is already so bad. But we got pretty much all these radiant effects still going. No degradation. Let me check this out. So, yeah, I just wanted to show those effects. And I wanted to thank all my sponsors. Thank all those who support MTech Industries and our partners. And it just keeps getting more and more power efficient. And thank you. Stay tuned.